Greetings, comic community. Greetings, horror fans. Greetings, uh, freaky 50s, weird fans, people who like that sort of thing, <laughs> like myself. Um, I'm going to showcase some things a little bit more than the usual five comics today, but it's not that much more. Probably going to be showing you about seven, I think. Um, not your typical Alan class. I'm stepping away for just this particular week to try and get through the backlog of comics that I've been buying from here, there and everywhere. You know, one from the big box, um, a couple, three from Birmingham, some from um, 30th Century Comics. And uh, yeah, I'm just gagging to show them to you. Um, I want to do a very quick shout out to Remy from an angel from Remy Q Studios. Um, because they, they posed a question about the the British pricing on American books, shall we say, and what, what do they mean? So I thought I'd quickly kind of answer that here in the video. Because YouTube still don't give you the ability to post pictures in comment sections, which I think is infuriating, because I'd like to just, in the comments, go, hey, this is what I'm talking about. But no, you've got to make a complete new video showing things like that. Which is, you know, YouTube, come on, it's the 21st century, allow pictures in your comment section, please. So Remy, this first little bit is for you. And I'm going to show you. Um, I mean, I've, I've had these before, but when I was young and stupid, I had them all bound up uh, into hardbound volumes, and I sold them. Um, never going to do that again. Um, experience. I mean, the books look fantastic, but you're basically destroying your comic collection by doing that. So no. So I have now been collecting these issues when I can, where I can, and a price that my wallet allows me because times have moved on and they are getting expensive. But I saw these two when I was in Birmingham and I thought, yeah, I'm going to get them, especially for a particular reason as well. So let me show you Tales of Suspense number 26. Remy, 9D, 9 pence. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, this comic was bought... Uh, sorry, it was published and made in the UK. That's not how it worked. All the comics were printed in the US. Um, at a certain point in the printing stage, the presses were stopped and they substituted uh, the US cent stamp with a UK variant, shall we say. And they didn't print as many of the overseas market comics, shall we say, as they would the American ones. So let, I'm picking these numbers out of my head. So let's, for instance, say they, they printed up, let's say 50,000 for the American market, which now seems a ridiculous amount, but back then it wasn't that many at all, shall we say. Or is it, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. Um, if we published 50,000 comics back then, um, then that's, that's quite a few. Nowadays it would be like 2,000, 3,000 for sale for the US market. So let's just pick that number, 50,000 for the US market, shall we? We're going back in time now to the early 60s. For the UK market, they may only produce 1,500, shall we say? Probably a lot less than that. Thereby making the UK editions more scarce. Therefore, more valuable. So a lot of people over decades have kind of like frowned upon the the overseas um, published uh, comics for the marketed for overseas. I really get my words mixed up today. I really apologise, but um, the penny is dropping or has finally dropped that these are scarce. They're much harder to find than the US versions um, because there weren't so many printed. It's as simple as that. And what drives the market up? It's scarcity. You know, it doesn't have to have a picture of a, let's say, Spider-Man on there to make it a uh, extremely expensive comic. Um, not at all. It's a scarcity, not the character, I believe. Although, you know, having Spider-Man in your books is fine because Spider-Man's a fine character and he does sell millions of books. He's the most popular character in the Marvel Universe. Let's put it that way. But no. Monster issue, uh, nine pence variant, published in the, uh, excuse me, printed on the US presses, 
substituted with an overseas market stamp, shall we say? I mean, that's not a stamp, it's actual, that's an actual print. And sent overseas to the UK. Scarce because there weren't so many printed. I hope that's gone a little way to clean up what these are all about, basically. Yeah. Printed for the overseas market. At the same time as the US ones, okay? These are not an afterthought. Anyhow, got that off my chest. Been waiting a while to say that. These are not an afterthought. Nine pence version of Tales of Suspense number 26. Saw that on the shelf in Birmingham at a comic shop. I thought I'm having that. Definitely. That's, uh, well, with this one, that's two more into my raw comic collection of Tales of Suspense sorted. And this one is the very next issue, number 27. Again, with the overseas UK market printing price. And it ain't a stamp, there's a difference. The stamp is like an ink stamp. This is an actual printed uh, price. And again, you can't beat that cover. What does it say? When Oog lives again, what will happen to mankind? That's yeah, a beautiful Kirby cover. So I wanted to, to, to bring these two for my most recent travels to get comics. Uh, because Jeremy from Remy Q Studios raised the question about these. So, I, I, Remy, if you're watching this with your cup of coffee, I have no coffee today. I've drunken it uh, inside the house already. I hope I've answered some of your questions on this. If you've got these, sir, any sort of nonsense stamps, treasure them. Because they weren't printed in a the quantity that the, the US ones were printed for the American market. Don't forget, England is just a little island. You know, you could probably fit Arizona and a little bit more into the space that occupies the UK. I never was good at uh, geography, but you get my drift. So yeah, that's 27. Now I want to show you, um, in the same comic shop actually, um, I saw this and I thought, yes, it's not expensive. It's a great looking issue and it's a number one. He bartered his head. This is from L. Miller and, and Company. Where does it say? Yeah, published by L. Miller and Co. Hackney Limited. Hackney being a place, a suburb of London. And just to remind readers, this is an adult comic. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And it wasn't a lot of money. So I thought, yes, I'm, I'm gonna grab that. Uh, because it'll go with the issue that I had in my big box. I'm just looking through these now. Uh, I'll come to it in a bit. Yeah, I think it's actually the very next issue. I can tell because it has a spine roll. So this is the number one of Voodoo by L. Miller & Co. of Hackney Limited. Voodoo. I just fell in love with the cover. I thought, you know, it's so very much like Alan Class. Some people, if they don't spot the L. Miller print there, they automatically think it's an Alan Class uh, when it's not. Beautiful. And this one was in the big box as well. I can tell that because it's got a spine roll. And a lot of comics in that big box has spine rolls. But this is number two of Voodoo. Published by L. Miller & Co, not Alan Glass. There's just something so wonderfully 50s. Uh, craziness, goriness uh, about these things, which I really enjoy. Um, you know, it's just wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's a snapshot of its time. A tale of mystery to hold you spellbound. There you go, you see, I'm being drawn into the comic again. Whereas I'm ignoring you lovely viewers and just looking at my lovely comic. So yeah, number two was in the big box. Let me put that aside. Uh, I bought the next two, I believe, from 30th Century Comics. 
and it gives me a big clue because this is number three of Voodoo. Um, and the clue that I got it from 30th Century Comics is the sticker on the front and how much I paid for it. But there you go, beautiful. Just so much of its time. A time before superheroes. Um, a time where horror was everything. Young kids could buy tales of horror from the newsstands where they see, you know, people getting their heads hacked off and stuff like that before the Comics Code Authority kicked in and decided, no, we can't be having our kids read this stuff. It's not right. And then, of course, because of that, the, the Wortham episode, because of that, horror comics, no pun intended, died a death. And then, you know, how do we save the comics industry? Superheroes. Challenges of the Unknown. Fantastic Four. You know, rebrand the Challenges of the Unknown. And let's kick off the whole era of superheroes, which fantastically lasts to this day. Anyhow, that's a bit of a spiel, isn't it? Just to remind you that this is an adult comic. Great cover luster. I haven't talked about cover luster today, have I, so far? But yeah, it's retained its colour and it's retained its sheen. And I couldn't say no. I decided um, to get all the voodoos and yeah. Number three, nice early issue. £17.50. I wasn't going to say no. So yeah, thank you 30th Century Comics. And the next one, again, from the same comic shop. 30th Century Comics. This is issue number four of Voodoo. Published by L. Miller & Co. It's an adult comic. And it's the curse of the werewolf. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. He was a creature that could not be destroyed, for he was the curse of the werewolf. Good Lord, nothing destroys that monster. It will kill us all. I... I can't hold out much longer. It's coming for me. Well, it's not coming for you. It's got you. What a fantastic cover that is. Beautiful. Okay, so coming to the last one of today. This was another one in the big box. This is Voodoo number seven. A uh, bit of a weird one, this one, you know. It's... Uh, let me just show you the cover, then I'll read you the blurb. It says, Inside this issue is the weird story about the curse of the gloves that reporter Jack Lonergan made up for a joke. That is, he thought he made it up until everything he had predicted in the curse started to come true. And then the joke seemed to be on no one but him. The Phantom Gloves. Yet another adult comic by L. Miller & Co. Beautiful, slight spine roll. Cover luster is present, no color break increases that I can see. And I'm absolutely itching to show you um, comics from a publisher and distributor called Thorpe and Porter. So on some of your comics you might see like a blue circle with a price in the middle, which is always gonna be in, in shillings. Uh, there may be some in pence to be fair, and it says T and P. TMP stands for Thorpe and Porter, who distributed comics from America. Um, ones that didn't have the actual printing of the um, pre-decimal prices. So they actually had the sense issues and it was boom, big stamp with a TMP on it. Um, so yep, Thorpe and Porter were a distribution company, or even a distribution company but they also publish comics. And I've got some wonderful comics to show you some point pretty soon. Um, actually, they also had, I believe, a uh, offshoot of the Thorpe and Porter publishing uh, house called Top Sellers. So, quite clever, really. Initially published by Thorpe and Porter. Um, how can I put this? Indicted by top sellers, 
an offshoot. A bit like when Marvel, uh, and I'm going off on all sorts of tangents here, a bit like when Marvel had their comics published with Marvel, but they were printed via Cadence Industries. Um, Thorpe and Porter did the same thing, but they did it through top sellers. Uh, where, where the hell was I going with this? So anyhow, they're beautiful comics. I've got them to show you pretty soon. Thorpe and Porter, top sellers. Uh, yes, and I will tell you more about those when I show you them next time. So meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed this little extended edition of, of the uh, episode. Um, I've got a lot to do today. Last weekend, through the wind and the storms and the lashing rain, me and my lovely wife, Nikki, we did a, um, a massive clean-up of the garden and we... There's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tree stumps and um, not debris as such, but lots of, shall we say, solid vegetation? Lots of stuff to, to get rid of. So today's job is uh, getting all that into the back of the car and taking up to the local recycling area as such and getting rid of it all you know just um, a good start to the new year making it less of a clutter etc so that's my huge job of today and am i looking forward to it yeah not really but it's got to be done so on that little um little note i shall see you next week for another video of wonderful old stuff thanks for watching this if this is the first time you've seen my mug then absolutely click the like on the video please comment and if you really feel inclined subscribe to this wonderful channel that doesn't uh, show you stuff like uh, most of the other channels do on comic channels do on YouTube um, yeah so I'll leave it at that love you all thank you for watching and I'll see you next week bye for now